in my last video, I showed a slight bedrock breaker. It was basically this bedrock breaking setup, but on a flying machine. But it had one problem, namely um, that it deleted pistons in every step, because this bedrock breaking setup deletes a piston, and it also rotates one piston. And uh, since a setup which deletes constantly pistons can't be fully automatic, uh, the flying bedrock breaker was fully automatic. Now it would of course be nice to have a fully automatic flying bedrock breaker. So in this video I will show how you can uh, break bedrock without deleting pistons. And when someday in the future maybe put it on a flying machine and then um, we have a fully automatic bedrock breaker. But, but to understand the um, a bedrock breaker which doesn't use pistons, I first have to talk about two minor piston bugs which I haven't talked about before. Um, one piston bug I call 1.8 flickering, which is basically a behavior which made sense in 1.8 but doesn't make any sense in 1.9 anymore. And to explain that behavior, I first have to explain some things about 1.8 piston behavior. 1.8 if you depart a piston, um, you convert it into a splitchy piston state before you convert to block 36 and to the retracted piston. Um, and if you updated a piston, gave him a very short theoretic output, so that he got power before the block event, then he wouldn't uh, retract, but he would get converted back to the extended state. Now, um, this is 1.8 piston behavior, in 1.9 we changed that this splitchy piston state no longer occurs, so if you give this piston a block update, or he retracts, and he will stay an extended piston instead of going into a splitchy piston state. But our behavior, which is still in the code, is that if you have a piston, a retracted piston, and this piston wants to retract, and he has power, then he will convert back into the extended state. So if you manage to artificially make a glitched piston, state when uh, this will still be converted back. Now it's um, of course quite difficult to get a retracted piston and make him retract, but that's basically what I do in the battle breaking glitch and for that reason you can um, make uh, a conversion which generates a new um, headless piston if you just add a little bit of redstone to the uh, battle breaker. So this conversion right here generates a headless piston facing into this battle right here. And you can then use it to break the bedrock, but it's not uh, that uh, interesting because you already use a, a bedrock breaking setup. Let me quickly place the pistons here. Um, correct. Ah, oh, yeah, it's okay. And let me quickly walk you through how this exactly works. Um, so it's basically the uh, bedrock breaking setup uh, plus a CO2 code. But I will walk you quickly through the tile ticks and the block events. So uh, first of all we have the tile ticks. When we flick this lever off, then uh, these repeaters and these, this comparator will get tile ticks. Um, and they will activate in this order, which your colors indicate. Um, I'm missing a click block. So first of all this repeater will turn off and this uh, headless sticky piston will schedule a block event. Then this repeater will turn off and this headless sticky piston will schedule a block event. Then this repeater will turn off and this piston will schedule a block event. And then this comparator will turn on. Um, but uh, this piston is an extended piston and get powered and there he schedules no block event. Why should he? Uh, so, um, to the block event, uh, this is the first block event that gets processed. If this block event gets processed, then this piston will get pulled into the middle, and the middle piston will be deleted. After that, this second headless piston will drop this middle piston in the middle. So we will have, have a retracted piston facing downward in the middle, and we have a retraction block event, and the piston is powered. So when this piston, uh, when this block event gets processed, this piston will exactly do the 1-8 flicker run because he's retracted. He's trying to retract again and he's powered and in that situation uh, the code says that he will just convert into the extended state again which means that we will have a headless piston right here. This is one bug which you need to understand to explain the construction I show later. And um, okay, that's the first minor piston bug. The second minor piston bug is that you can schedule identical block events. You can have 
two identical block events uh, within the same position at the same time. Um, you, um, you can schedule such block event if you have at least one block event delay between uh, the two block events you are scheduling. Uh, there is a system to remove duplicate block events in the code, but it doesn't work very well and it only really works if you don't have a block event delay between the two um, uh, block events you are scheduling. But if you have a block event delay, then you can schedule um, two block events which are exactly identical in the same position. And with that, you can also do some interesting stuff. For example, right here we have a construction which will instantly pull this block down. It's not really useful because it requires a headless sticky piston, um, but it's cool nonetheless. So if I flip this lever and when you see that the iron block is already uh, pulled down, it got pulled down instantly. Um, so I will now explain how this thing works. And it works by uh, scheduling duplicate block events. This should be yeah, okay. So um, we have tile ticks. Um, after the tile ticks, we have a block event here, block event here, block event here, and then we can play. Now, when this first block event gets processed, um, this piston will get updated. This piston will see I'm an extended piston. I'm not powered because this will be is already off, so I will schedule a block event. So this piston will actually schedule two block events at once, so he will have two block events. After that, uh, the orange block event will get processed, so this piston will retract and it will pull the block downward, so we will have a uh, block 36 of the iron block in the place where currently the piston head is. After that, the headless sticky piston will retract and it will drop this piston and this means that the piston will be retracted. And after that, we will have another block event. And so this piston which is already retracted will retract again. And then it will do the block dropping and the block dropping will make the arm block uh, instantly finish its movement and that's why it can pull down instantly. So it works by scheduling two block events in the same position. And that this is possible is the second piston block you need to understand. Now, before I um, get to the bedrock working setup, I want to show um, another cool thing which you can do with the uh, 1 8 flickering and the duplicate block event scheduling. And that is, you can um, move uh, headless sticky pistons. So, right here we have our contraption um, with one headless sticky piston, and it will move this headless sticky piston over here. Or, in other words, it will use this headless sticky piston to generate a new headless sticky piston over here, so if I click the server, then we will get a headless sticky piston over here, which we didn't have previously. So, um, I will explain how this works. And so, again, you have tile ticks at first. Um, you have a tile tick here, 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 and I, I didn't prepare well enough. I need another tile tick. Um, and then we get uh, block events. So uh, first with Peter turns off, we get a block event here, 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 and here. Okay. Now when this piston retracts, uh, it will update this piston again. This piston will see again. I'm unpowered. I'm extended. I need to retract, and I need to get another play. Um, yeah. Then after this piston retracted, this piston will retract. So um, this piston will just convert itself into a block 36. Then this headless piston will drop this piston. So we will now have a retracted sticky piston right here in the, in the spot. Then this piston will retract and this power line will turn on. This power line will up power this retracted sticky piston here. And when this block event will get processed and then we will have a Retracted piston right here, the retracted piston will be powered and the retracted piston will try to retract again. And that's exactly the situation where one edge flickering occurs, so this piston will convert into a headless sticky piston. You can also use this to create headless normal pistons, but if you have a headless normal piston, you can't move them further with this method. Um, this is, uh, uh, and this construction might also be quite useful in some situations, I don't know. So I just wanted to show this. I also put this construction on a flying machine, because if something is cool, then it's even cooler on a flying machine, but 
Um, anyway, so right here we have our headless stick to piston right here. And this headless stick to piston just gets moved along. This flying machine is very inefficient, but uh, it works, and I just wanted to show you this a proof of concept that you can move these headless pistons along without uh, having TNT or rivers on your flying machine. So that's also something interesting which I just wanted to show. And so that's one application of duplicate block event scheduling and one exhibition. Now to the other application, namely you can uh, break bedrock without deleting any pistons. I had to make a quick cut because uh, I have found that explaining this thing in detail is more confusing than helpful because there are so many tactics. So I will just explain to you the idea behind this contraption and that will hopefully um, be enough. And if you really want a detailed explanation, you can ask me in the comments. So the basic idea of how we want to break bedrock without deleting pistons is that we will just try to get this piston out of here using duplicate block events. So uh, normally um, the, the basic idea behind the bedrock breaking is that this piston will schedule a block event, then we will put this piston into the position of this piston, so that this piston will schedule the block event that this piston created. I process the block event. This piston will process the block event that this piston created. That's the basic idea. And now all we need to do is just get this piston out of here early enough. And the way we will do this is we will make the piston in the middle not only schedule one block event, but we will make it schedule two block events. So this piston here will schedule two block events for retraction. Then this piston in the middle will retract himself. And since I'm only explaining the concept, I can kind of directly show it. We will use one of the headless sticky pistons to make this retraction instant. And then we can um, pull him out because then we will have our retracted piston here and then we can pull him out and he doesn't need to be deleted or anything. Then we can push in the other piston. We will use the headless sticky piston to make this movement instant. And I could just... Um, it is now really complicated to explain why you can't just use the CO tick there. You can't just use the CO tick there because it would be fast enough because this block event would get processed too early if you just use the CO tick. You really need a headless ticket piston there. Um, anyway, we will use, uh, we will put this piston in position and then this block event will get processed and the bedrock will get deleted. And since we had, uh, and we, as you can see, this piston right here didn't get deleted, we saved it. Because we didn't just make it schedule one block event, we make it we made it schedule two block events. The first one we used to get it out of there, and the second one we used to break the bedrock. And this is basically what's also happening right here, except that everything is complicated and we have some issues with scheduling block events because this piston needs uh, movable blocks in front of him both at the time when he schedules his block event and when he actually moves his the stuff. And so we have additional complications, but in the end, this thing just breaks a piece of bedrock down here without deleting any pistons. Now, there's still a tiny problem, namely uh, one of the pistons gets rotated. Now, uh, there's an obvious, and we, we want to automate this process, so we want to make a flying machine which completely automatically breaks bedrock, and if our pistons get rotated, then that's a problem because then you can't reduce them unless you rotate them again. Now rotating them again would be very annoying because then you would basically need to perform a split twice. But there's uh, luckily a more simple solution and that is to use just the 1-8 flickering instead of a direct bedrock rating. So right here we have the exactly exact setup except that I have another piston right here which will power the piston in the middle again. Um, so that we will have some kind of uh, theoretic offputs right here, so that this piston won't instantly break the bedrock, but instead it will just um, we will just break a headless piston, a headless normal piston facing downward above the bedrock. So if I pick this lever, then we will have the same situation, and then we will have a headless piston right here. This headless piston can then be used to break the bedrock if you just remove this then it will break the bedrock, so you can see this bedrock is now broken. And the other thing you might have noticed is that this piston didn't rotate upwards, 
um, because it was just a headless pistol face and gauger still did in a bedrock and there's no reason for this to rotate. So with this setup right here, um, the cam break bedrock without deleting any pistons and without rotating any pistons. And this means that if we get this setup on a flying machine and manage to make a flying machine which uses this every step, then we can have fully automatic bedrock breaking. That's everything for this video.